Good morning everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Nijon Louis and I'm one of the MFL teachers at Choni High School for Girls and I'm also one of the EdTech practitioners. In today's presentation I'm going to talk to you about Rosenshine's principles and as you know there are 10 principles but I will only focus on principle number eight which is a scaffolding for difficult tasks. So without further ado let's just start. Before I give you any clear example of how I use, I've implied um, this principle into my classroom, let's have a look at what Rosenshine suggests. So as you know, as I've just said, principle A is to provide, is to provide scaffold for difficult tasks. So Rosenshine suggests that you provide the student with a framework that make it easier for them to make progress. So this scaffold could uh, take different form. It could be a checklist, cue cards, or writing frames, any support or help sheets that you uh, create or provide to the students but the crucial part is to make sure that all scaffold tasks could be removed gradually so the students can access the work independently so i find this image on uh, tom Cherrington blog uh, so as i've just said teachers need to provide students with support we shouldn't be permanent we should be just for the task for practice and then um, gradually remove this task. So let's have a look at how I applied, I've used Rosenshine Principle 8 into uh, my MFL classes. This principle could actually be applied to all four core skills, language skills. So speaking, listening, reading and writing and at all key stages. So in order to help students to tackle difficult tasks, we need to encourage them to use strategies to support them. So I'm going to show you in the next following uh, slides uh, the different uh, example of different tasks, scaffold tasks that I've used for different skills. Obviously, most of them are uh, for uh, MFL lessons, but you can still adapt them for your own subject. The first one that we're looking at is for writing task. So. For me, the first task that I normally give my students is, as a scaffold task, is a step-by-step -step breakdown and checklists. So we use uh, scaffold sheets to help students work through the steps of the task. So step one, it might be translate uh, the bullet point into English. Step two, change the bullet point into different person, etc., etc. So if you look on the left hand side with a table, you've got an example of all different directions that I give out my students throughout the task before they actually uh, complete the writing task. OK, so this is more like a, a help sheet that they've got a step by step breakdown of everything they need to do in order for them to complete the tasks. Now, I find this one very useful, especially for key space for students. When it comes to writing, you could also, one of the scaffold tasks could be, give, could be to give them uh, bullet points, either in the target language or in English. But when they have the bullet, uh, the bullet point in the target language, they might tend to reuse the same language from the, tar from the bullet point to start their own sentence. For instance, if they ask them, uh, where do you normally go to uh, uh, on holiday? They will say, uh, to start the sentence, they will use that phrase because it's given in the target language, but they will start by saying, where I, where you do normally go to Spain, instead of saying I. So the second step is could be very crucial. You ask them to change all the second person from the bullet point into the first person, okay? So this is something that you could actually make yourself. It doesn't have to be only for my subject. You can apply to your own subject. Literally uh, give the students uh, different uh, instructions uh, so that it makes it clearer for them what steps they need to take to, in terms of uh, writing, in terms of their writing. I've got a couple more examples of uh, scaffolding tasks for writing uh, following on the next slide. So the other one that we use quite often, especially uh, since lockdown, is the sentence, bu sentence builders. This is the frame that uh, you give to your students that needs to help them to write longer or more complex sentences. You can also use it to practice other skills that are translation from target language uh, to uh, English or from English to the target language. 
so if you look at the bottom of the um, the frame, I've got a couple of examples of how I use it for translation task. To make it more challenging, you can encourage the student to remove the English or give them a frame without the English as well. Um, so when they become more confident, they can do it without uh, the English uh, phrases. Okay, so that's the second one. Sentence builders, it's really good. The other thing we can do, you can do with sentence builders is actually help them understand the structure of sentences, but paragraphs as well. So you could have different headings on your frame. So it could be a time phrase on top, and then you give them a, a subject, and then the verb, and then the object, etc., etc. So they've got an idea of where each part of the sentence, what what they can find in each part of the sentence and be able to hopefully create their own sentence without support. Okay, so the third uh, task, scaffold task for my writing is a structural writing strips that I call it. So you've got an example on the left hand side. So the, well, I normally uh, set this task as a consolidation. So they would put everything together. You covered all the topic and at the end they need to uh, complete um, a writing task so you can give them the bullet point so it's entirely up to you and also give them the fly path they will achieve if they only complete this part of uh, the task they can stick that in the book in the margin and then write next to next to each bullet point for differentiation you could uh, provide them sentence starters as well in the target language and uh, that might have some students who do not know how to start the sentence but the reason that I give them the English and the French sentences is also they can use the uh, questions, the phrases in the target language to start off. But sometimes they still struggle, so you can do that. Give them the sentence starters. Or to make it more challenging, you could remove the questions in the target language and um, give them the, the bullet points only. Uh, you might pro them, provide them with a, a list of things, a checklist of things they have to include. Um, it could be a step by step with a checklist that they have to uh, to do at the end. Um, and then that will help them um, cover, all, cover all the bullet points that they need to do. OK, so for the writing task, I've got three different uh, scaffold uh, activities that you can do. So the structure strip, uh, the step by step, the sentence builders, uh, these are different things that I use in the MFL, but you can also use them for your own subjects, for history or English, especially the subjects. Okay. Now, scaffolding to help students developing their uh, speaking skills. This is an example for KISTIS 4, um, to help them improve their speaking and their fluency. Um, so what we do, we give them uh, a model instance. You get them the questions in the target language and in English as well and provide them a model answer for this particular question. They will then have a step two to write their own answers using the model. And they have to learn um, to go over the answers weekly and then you test them weekly on a weekly basis. And then step three, you ask them the same question or similar question and encourage them to reply without the support sheets. But they will have for each question a model answer and the translation in English to start off with. And then gradually you move all of that and you start asking them questions. You might switch the questions around. You might rephrase the question um, to create a bit of surprise there and also for them to work on their um, um, fluency as well. OK, so that's the first uh, scaffold activity for my speaking that I use with my case test for. On the next slide, I've caught an example of a case test three. Uh, scaffolding tasks for speaking uh, skills. So this is the one that uh, I can use for my year sevens or even my year eight, uh, low, uh, bottom set uh, year eight. So use this mat with pictures and images for each phrase, like you can see. And then gradually, so you practice those in class and asking them questions about their favorite subject and the reason for this favorite subject, etc., etc. And then use the mat without the phrase to encourage them to recall the phrases. Then you start using the uh, speaking mat without the emojis and the pictures to encourage your student to recall the phrases used. And lastly, you guide your students uh, for the answers with simple, simple instructions in English. So you could tell them, give an opinion first, then the subject, then a conjunction, and then justify your opinion with some adjectives. 
but it's all gradually because the idea is for them to get to a point that they don't need that support anymore okay but also make sure that you practice it so much that they get so used to it so by the time you get to the point that you remove or different steps or different uh, pictures or different part of this uh, support sheets they can actually cope okay so that's the one that i use for my case these three now if you move on to reading and listening tasks some of the scaffold activities i've just um, listed them on the right hand side um, for comprehension uh, tasks, you can use a series of warm-up activities, so pre-listening activities, pre-reading activities that are pair up sentences, reorder text, or identify words that they can hear if it's a listening task. Um, the idea is to introduce them to the language uh, for that reading and listening task uh, before they can actually hear, uh, um, hear the audio or read the text, okay? So I have included a few tasks below that you could actually uh, use to prepare your student for a listening comprehension. Some of the tasks uh, may be replaced with reading or speaking or writing activities uh, to uh, give a bit of variety there. Um, so task one could be a vocab building activities uh, in which your vocab is um, in the target language. Um, is presented in practice. Task two could be word recognition tasks with a matchup activity for English and French or Spanish. And then task three, it could be a listening to short sentences and translate. Task four, listening to a set of sentences and identify key grammatical points, uh, spot the adjectives or categorize the, word, the verbs in, uh, heard in tenses, etc., etc. So you've got a list of activities there that you can use as pre-listening um, or reading tasks with your students before you actually give them the tasks. You can work with a transcript when it comes to a listening task. So they work with a transcript, uh, sorry. They try to uh, identify different part of the sentence or tenses uh, before they can actually hear. And then you provide them with the questions uh, for the comprehension task and it will make it easier for your students as well. So these are the, um, the different activities, scaffold tasks that I've uh, created or um, used or found or adapted for my students. Um, and finally, as research findings. Uh, and finally, scaffolding and MFL can take many forms, um, but the important part is that the steps involve students um, are students to feel more confident and able to, talk, to, to tackle the tasks uh, that they are set. It's crucial that we carefully consider how to remove these scaffolds so that they can confidently complete the task without any support. So, and last but not least, uh, these are the links and the references for um, of all the um, resources that I've uh, shared in this presentation. Um, so if you want to uh, have a look and find out a bit more, feel free to do so. But if you do have any questions, feel free to drop me an email and I will come back to you. Au revoir. Salut.